can be agreed to, and I give the call to the member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, it's wonderful to be able to speak on this motion moved by the member for Higgins, because it goes to the heart of the type of country we want to be. It goes to the heart of whether we're a nation that takes responsibility for ourselves as part of a global community and the action that we take as citizens, community and country to make sure that we steward our environment from one generation healthy to the next. Deputy Speaker, those are the values and those are the principles that motivate me to be in this chamber in the first place, They're the cornerstone of liberalism itself. This motion is a very liberal motion about the responsibility that we take and this government takes in stewarding the health of Australia's environment to future generations. Because what we have done as a government has been about how we build the capacity for Australians to care for the bounty of our beautiful continent and earth by providing $167 million to fund an alternative Australian recycling investment plan to increase Australia's recycling rates, to tackle plastic waste and litter, to accelerate work on new recycling schemes and to continue to implement our commitment to halve food base waste by 2030. It's a plan, yes, that is designed in Canberra, but its focus is how we work to empower community and citizens to take greater responsibility for themselves and do the right thing by our environment. And day in, day out, we see this in our wonderful Goldstein community, made up of the city of Bayside and Glen Ira, or parts of the city of Glen Ira. Both councils, working with community organisations, continue to lead in caring for our environment. In fact, both recently introduced the capacity to put food waste in bins so that it can be recycled and harvested to generate energy and as part of a long-term plan to develop compost uh, for our community. To stop the waste, to stop so much of food waste being put aside and discarded only to go to landfill. And what's been really disappointing is that while we have councils taking such strong action, engaging residents to do the heavy lifting, and we have a federal government that has made this a big priority, I want to pay particular uh, recognition and respect to the Minister, uh, Trevor Evans, who has done a wonderful job in leading the discussion around waste management, improvement of waste management uh, across the country. It has been so little action frankly, from our state government in Victoria, who seem to at least rhetorically say the right things, but when it actually comes to an action plan to get things done, has been left by the wayside and allowed ourselves to end up in a situation where we have had such a big crisis around waste in our state and ultimately across the country. And what we're focusing our energy on isn't just on what we need to do at the high level around strategy, and yes, it's about empowerment, but it's also the capacity and the opportunity that waste provides to recapture as part of a circular economy to build the industries of the future. Of the $167 million uh, that we've provided, it includes $100 million through the Clean Energy Finance Corporation to support the manufacturing of lower emissions and energy efficient recycling, uh, recycled content products, such as recycled content plastics and paper and pulp. $20 million for a new product stewardship investment fund to accelerate work on new recycling schemes, such as batteries, electrical and electronic products, uh, photovoltaic systems and plastic oil containers. And of course, these important, simple but clear measures by this government stand in such stark contrast with the ineffectiveness of our state government, which is why I was so happy to see the uh, Victorian opposition only yesterday come out with a clear plan around our, our uh, waste crisis in our state and how it can be harvested and reused and repurposed for fuel and energy generation. This is a sort of big picture thinking that Australians want to see from the federal government and their state governments, where we can turn a burden into an opportunity and set the course for a safe, 
environment that's stewarded for future generations. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member.